back to another Sam.gov Bids Live episode where we walk through small business solicitations together here on Sam.gov and we answer your questions along the way so that you, new federal contractor, can start bidding and winning contracts. Okay. Today we have five small business solicitations pulled up that we will be jumping into in just a second. But if you are new here and you don't want to miss future Sam.gov Bids episodes, consider subscribing to our channel and click that notification bell so that you can ask your questions live on future live streams. If you happen to be somebody who was recently registered in SAM and you're looking to get started bidding, click my website, govkidmethod.com. We have free and paid resources that were specifically designed for small businesses just like you to support you in the federal space. So let's go ahead and take a look at our bids that we're gonna be jumping into for today. So today we're kicking off over at uh, Minot Air Force Base for grounds maintenance. We also have the VA Clinical Documentation Review Services. Next, we have a pre-yellow ribbon program event. It's gonna be for the Army. Then we have snow and ice removal. And guys, there's a lot of snow and ice removal. I know a lot of you are saying, Derek, there's not as many bids on Sam, it's slowing down. Um, depends what industry you're in. In grounds maintenance, it's actually speeding up. And then number five, we have certified athletic trainers, strength and conditioning specialist services for human performance branch. Uh, it's gonna be within the Navy. And this is gonna be like staffing people. So that's what we're gonna be getting into today. And if you're new here, um, the way we do it, we get through as many bids as we can within an hour. And then after each and every bid, we go ahead and check the chat. So now if you have questions, anything as we go throughout, we'll go ahead and post those in the chat as you have them. And then I will be bouncing between the bids and the live stream chat um, kind of one at a time as we go. And also, so you know, I don't look at any of these bids ahead of time. I pull them up um, and this way we can go through them together. You can get the live, raw, you know, unrefined feedback and response from me instead of something that's polished and is going to probably be less helpful to you. That's where we kind of wade through the mess together. And it looks like we got Benel joining us. Uh, hello, hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Benel Services, janitorial from New York. Thanks for coming back, Benel. We definitely um, appreciate your support here on the channel and you are a returning member. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first, again, Minot Air Force Base grounds maintenance. This is for the Air Force. This is due October 20th. The small or the set aside rather on this is total small business. The NAICS code is 561730 for landscaping services. This is a non-personal services contract that includes all the personnel equipment tools and supervision required to be performed again at Minot Air Force Base. Questions are due October 14th, about a week from now. So this is, you know, these are all live, but there actually is a bit of time to go after this one. Um, in terms of our attachments, looks like we have a price schedule, past performance information form, um, instruction to offers, instruction to quarters. We have a wage determination. We have a statement of work. Looks like what's gonna be um, some maps are in here for the grounds. We have uh, clauses and provisions, some amendments, uh, building floor plans and photos. So those are our attachments and contracting. We have Nicole Brady and Justin Lawfrey as well. So we'll go ahead and just start ticking these off. We're not gonna open every single document, but we usually get started off with the solicitation itself. I'm gonna see what this combo is. Contracting often names things, whatever they want. So we kind of have to discover it for ourselves. This does look like a solicitation doc. However, it is only five pages long. They're giving us line items. And again, this is for grounds maintenance. So we can't make the assumption that it's for just snow plowing. And here we're seeing um, gr growing seasons. We're seeing leaf removal, fertilization, weed control. You get the picture. Instruction to quotas. Um, this is simplified acquisition. So under 250K, that's what SAP means. All quotes must 
include the CLID structure. So you can fill out the pricing. Complete this information below for your company information. They're not really telling us a whole lot in this document. We have some terms and conditions. Okay, so TEP, total evaluated price. Um, we have our basis for award, how the winning bidder will be chosen, i.e. evaluation factors. So factor one is price. Factor two is capability, which includes a QCP quality control plan as a sub-factor one. Your experience a sub-factor two. And then we have um, factor three to be past performance. So since you guys know this is how you're going to be rated, i.e. this is how the winning bidder is going to be chosen, this is the information that you should make very easily accessible in your proposal submissions, in your bid packets. We kind of work backwards, right? We work backwards from what they're going to be grading on, and this becomes our proposal. We'll see what else they've given us. We do have a instruction to quoters we can go ahead and, and look at next. Maybe the same exact document, though. Here it is, attachment seven. But I've never looked at this before, so let's just see. So this is three pages long. This is kind of the boilerplate instruction to offers thing where you need to include the solicitation number, yada, yada. Um, it, it's, it's a boilerplate thing. If you were to only follow this, follow this, you would be considered non-compliant. You need to look at this, okay? When all you have is this, that's fine. But when they give you something more specific, like they have here, they're literally telling you the factors, the sub factors, what's going into those sub factors, right? So this is going to be really the thing that steers your proposal and your competitive winning response on this. They are giving us like a past performance um, form that they're going to want filled out. And guys, what's the difference between experience and past performance? Experience is work that you've done. Past performance is how you did on that work, okay? So that's why they're asking you questions because this is a, a past performance form. That's why you're gonna see questions of like, how would you rate the contractor? Would you award another contract to them, okay? And this does not have to be a previous government contract, okay? Because then it's like the chicken and the egg thing. Well, like I need a government contract to get another contract because everything requires past performance. False, not true. You can use anything you've done in the commercial space, but then you can also use your own personal experience as past performance that you bring to the company, even if it hasn't been done by the entity that's registered in SAM. Or furthermore, um, and more widely used is you can use your subcontractor's past performance, which would probably be, be the way that you would go since this is again, a grounds maintenance contract and you're probably not self-performing a whole lot of grounds maintenance. Makes sense? I'll just take a quick glance at one of these photos and <laughs> I, I don't, I don't get it. Um, if this is a grounds maintenance contract, let's actually first look at the statement of work. Um, this is interesting. Like I'm kind of all over the place, right? Cause we're seeing, I know we're going through this super fast, but we're seeing um, this snow portion of this. So is this like summer and winter? That's kind of what I'm wanting to, to find out in the statement of work, but they're giving us these sidewalk patterns, you know, that we need to um, shovel and, and sidewalk snow removal here as well. Whereas if you remember when we first started looking at this, it was like seasonal growing and pest control and some more of the, like the summer seasonal things that you would expect. Um, looking for that statement of work. Am I just imagining that they gave us one? I could be. Oh, here it is. So statement of work right now, and then we're going to look at the pricing uh, stuff next. So see, we're, we're seeing mow, edge, trim, weed control. Um, but then we're also seeing like ice control. So it could be like both seasons. And I'm pretty sure that the, the pricing schedule would really like help to fill that out. But you see guys, like we've gathered a lot of information, like five minutes of looking at this, but you, you find specific things where you need to go deeper. Cause like, we're like, okay, it makes sense. Got it. Got it. Got it. And then, okay, I need to make sense of this thing. So we need to look, this is how you read, read through documents. You don't just read it line by line, word by word, page by page. It's, it's an Easter egg hunt. It is a seek and find game. And, and so improving grounds, 
vegetative beds, snow ice removal. So we're getting confirmation that this is going to be for um, multi-seasonal months. And then coming over to the pricing table, quarters pricing schedule, this should hopefully fill in the remaining gaps that I'm having. Because we already have a pretty good idea. Okay, wait. Okay, that's just the totals. Okay, this is much better. So this helps a whole lot because we have quantity for the months and then just the extended amount times the number of months. So we have um, growing season, growing season, debris removal, debris removal, life removal, fertilization, weed control, prine shrubs, prine shrubs, uh, and then perform ice and snow removal. And then it's for one, two, three, four. We're finding out here that this is for a base plus four option years. So for a five-year contract in total, and then pretty easy to, to price this, or, you know, for example, you're working with a sub, um, you need them to price apples to apples with what the government's asking you to fill out. So you give them this same exact form. So that way they give this to you and then you do your markup and your modifications, and then you give this to the government. So it makes uh, that, that last piece of information really helped to kind of bring us home. Still doesn't answer my question about why they're giving us floor plans and inside of the building. So that's something that maybe is a fine detail that we missed, but uh, you guys are looking at this with me It's ground maintenance, nothing to do with the interior of the building. So maybe a question to ask, or like I said, maybe something to dig into a little bit further. Um, yeah. So let's say hello to everybody in the chat, answer questions, and then we'll bounce and keep the train moving to the next bid. Um, we have Kevin uh, Zalico or Zalico. Um, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, Kevin. Good to see you, man. Invictus uh, 15. Can I work for the federal government as a civil servant and put bids in for different federal agencies as a side gig? So that's a legal question, Invictus. It's a good question. Um, the typical answer is to speak with the legal office with your department and then the typical answer that is given is if you do non or not non, but if you do agencies that are not the same agency that you're at, there's no OCI um, opportunity. So there's no chance of any sort of conflict of interest. So it's usually totally fine. Uh, but the answer is always go to the legal person or the legal office within your agency to let them know what you're thinking of doing and just make sure they don't have something specific to your agency um, you know, in terms of like paperwork you need to sign off on or anything like that. But that's been my experience. Yeah, for instance, I work for the Navy for sure. Um, so what is the Navy? Is the Navy, is the, is the Navy JAG? I don't know why I think that. But yeah, whatever the legal office is. Um, but you're going to be doing for HVACs uh, at the VA. Yeah, yeah. So I, I would I would recommend what I just said. Um, I would take that that course of action. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And and it sounds like you have a little bit Invictus. It sounds like you have a little bit of idea. It sounds like you're on the same track and way of thinking that I am, but just take that next step to just cover your bases. And I think you can um, do that. And then you can kind of like start making progress to start doing this. Uh, Devonda McLeod finally caught your live. Yes. Yes. You made it. <laughs> Welcome. Um, let's see. On the lodging bids, do you add your profits on top of each CLIN or just one time? Um, it depends on the way that the CLIN is structured. You know, what is a CLIN? It's a con contracting line item number or in layman's terms is a bucket of money for a specific thing. So it could be for, you know, you're talking about lodging, right? So there could be a bucket of money or a CLIN for the rooms. And then, you know, like the lodging rooms. Then there could be another CLIN for conference rooms. And then another CLIN for AV, you know, and, and conferencing equipment, you know, audio video stuff. Then another CLIN for meals, right? So if the question is, do I just like pick one and put all my markup on that? Uh, it's not really like you're providing each subject service. So you really like the rightest way to do it is to spread it out over everything, unless it's something that shouldn't um, have a markup on it, um, like contract manpower reporting or something like that, which isn't really like a, it's not the same as the other things. And if you don't know what I'm talking about by CMR, don't like, don't worry about it, but usually it's like a, an even distribution. And here's why, here's why I tell you that. I had a heavy equipment rental contract back in the day and we 
we were working with Caterpillar and then Komatsu and we had different, you know, like different dealers, retailers that we were renting this equipment from for the Army Corps. And we, we spread out our profit, but then we, we put more profit in for certain equipment and then other equipment, we were not like profitable at all. It was just kind of like a wash, but it was okay because we were making up so much more on these other cleanse, these other buckets of money. <laughs> well, I mean, guess what, what happened? Um, the government ended up deciding to extend the cleanse that we were breaking even on. And then they reduced the months that they're going to be renting the ones we were making a lot of profit on. And we were like, oh my God, we've never experienced this before. How is this possible? And then we're like, we're, we're so close to like losing money on this contract because they, they changed what they were doing with the cleanse versus like, if we didn't do that way and we spread it out more evenly, if they extend something, then it's still profitable no matter what, or if they reduce something, it's still profitable no matter what. So for example, like if you were, you know, doing like you didn't put any markup on the meals or the AV stuff and you know, all your profit was in all the rooms for lodging and then they kicked back on the rooms, but then they kept the meals and stuff there, then that will, that will crunch your profit margin. Um, if not like, like put you in the red. So lessons learned. I did a whole video on that a couple of years ago. Um, so that's, that's the reason behind my answer guys. Most of the things I suggest to you is because they're based from either my personal experience that I've lived through um, lots of mistakes I've made and, and have been part of, you know, teams that have made or just clients that I've worked with. Um, so I, I try to only tell you stuff based on experience from one way or the other, or if I don't know, I'll just tell you, I don't know, but, um, I can pretty much tell you, you're not going to want to like pick and choose like we used to do. Um, do you follow a formula with regards to adding your fee as the middleman? Um, I mean, you're, you should have your own company's internal pricing formula. That's accounting for um, like all of your costs and then whatever your strategy is for, for your pricing. So you should have your own kind of internal formula that you are, are following. Um, whether it's middlemanning or self-performing, I mean, the formula may change a little bit, but you need to make sure all your expenses are being covered and your profit is being included on top of that. Um, don't have anything like magical to tell you, Coco, about that. Um, but yeah, you should have some sort of formula for sure. Uh, ASAP cash. Uh, what are the busiest quarters? Slowest. Uh, busiest meaning the most bids are coming into the market and the most contracts are being awarded are Q3 and Q4. Slowest are Q1 and Q2. And it's not calendar year, it's fiscal year. So for example, we just started Q1. October, November, December is 2023 for the fiscal budget for the government. Okay. So then Q3 and Q4 are going to take you through spring and then summer. Good question. One more, then we'll get back to the bids. Uh, Kevin, I have an issue with my physical address mismatch on Sam and I still didn't get my cage code. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, so Kevin, uh, I've, um, I'm aware of what's going on with the physical address issue. Um, what I had to go to, and I know a number of people have to do is they have to upload like your, like your articles of incorporation, um, something that shows your physical address because it's not in the drop down when you try to register in Sam, like you're not seeing it. You send that to them, they add that to the drop down, then you go back through and then eventually it's there like after a week or two, and then you select it and then you move forward. That will stop you from doing what you need to do to get your cage code. So they kind of are one and the same. Um, if that's your issue, then that's like, they should be telling you what they need. Um, if they haven't told you anything, then, um, you need to like ask them, like, what's the problem guys? What do you, what do you need from me? But make sure you check your, your junk and your spam filters. Cause they usually are forthright about telling you what they need. <clears throat> okay. Next bid clinical documentation review services. You can see here FY 23, fiscal year 2023. That's how you know we're already in it. This is for the VA. This is due November 3rd. This is actually SDV OSB set aside. Um, so it's not total small, but that's okay. We can still learn from it. 561410 document prep services. And this is going to be VA out of Florida. We only have two documents. We have a solicitation and what appears to be an amendment. 
we don't really know what document prep services exactly they're looking for. So that's something that I'm kind of going into this, wanting to learn a bit more about. They're giving us this table of a supplies table with hours, uh, is it hours? Just each, each meaning uh, what appears to be like reviews or trainings. Over the past three years, we've conducted audits. The average accuracy is 65%. It doesn't sound very good if they're doing audits that are 65% accurate. Current findings from the audits include, but are not limited to insufficient documentation, right? So, you know, 65 is not good, they're telling us. They're seeking a contract to evaluate, contract to evaluate provider clinical documentation. So this evaluation would include outpatient inpatient, uh, inpatient care, and the contractor will identify missing documents in these records. So basically we need to get these numbers up, like just kind of quickly discerning that 65% low. And they need like this review to go through and say, Hey, we're missing this. And then create some sort of campaign probably to go and get that missing information. Kind of, I'm quickly piecing this puzzle together. We have 300, um, 3,200 outpatient records, 3,320 inpatient records. So yeah. And they're talking about training and stuff like this too. So probably how to like fix the problem for the future. They're looking for this review to be uh, remote, which is cool. Like you don't have to be at the VAMC in Florida um, to do this. You can do this from your business, your facility. There may be in-person training. And this is going to be for base plus four years. So this is like a long-term ongoing thing. They probably got in trouble. Like literally they probably got audited and they're like, holy crap. Like we're a little bit over half in terms of being compliant with our patient records over here at the VA. Uh, now we need to cut a contract for somebody to like get us to say like 80% or something. Like, I don't know what it is. So that's, it's kind of interesting. We didn't have any clue that that was going to be the case. We only have two documents again, uh, the solicitation here and then the, the actual, uh, the, the amendment it appeared to be. So I'm just looking for more information on our proposal, which they usually stick all the way at the back. Looks like we're into reps and certs right before that. Yeah, this one's actually hard to find. I didn't see it like a, a pricing table either. This looks like we're in the PWS area. Or we were interesting. Let me try to, to cheat and do control F on this instruction. Evaluation. A lot for evaluation. So not a whole lot here. I mean, I, I saw this initially, but I didn't want to, I wanted to keep looking. So it says the government will award a contract resulting from this solicitation uh, based on what's most advantageous to the government with uh, technical past performance and price being considered. Technical past performance when combined are equal to price. So it is going to be like a best value award. It's not going to be lowest price. They're not giving us anything at all though, really in terms of like a proposal breakdown, what they're looking for. I saw some stuff at the very end. So I'm going to come back to this. All quarters shall submit technical three past performance and pricing. So literally guys, like sometimes it's just this half a page. You can see the font is totally different. This is just something they typed in and they snuck in at the very end here. Uh, I was hoping there was something a bit more than this and there wasn't. So um, all quotes shall be sent to uh, David Wesley. Award will be made uh, upon comparative evaluation. We already talked about, this is gonna be SAP. So under 250K probably. And 
going to be best value. Technical plus past performance are equal to price. And pretty much all the stuff that we already found. So really not much to go off of. And we don't even have pricing tables or anything. Before I say too much, I am going to just see if there's anything else in this uh, amendment here. And this is why it's so important. That's, that, that's why this show is what it is. That's why we focus on reading. We focus on finding things. And then we focus on kind of like making quick bid, no bid decisions. What does this amendment say? Oh, it's nothing. It's just a... Uh, the attachments. Okay. Yeah. So literally nothing. Um, so in this case, like you're going to literally be on your own to make up your own proposal structure. They're telling us technical past performance and price. So then we just re revert to our kind of skeleton and bare bones stuff, which is going to be cover page, cover letter, table of contents. And then we bring in what they gave us technical three past performances and, and price pricing on this is a little crazy because we know it was for five years. So we're going to have to just price this one as like one job because they didn't break down any like clean structures or anything specific. So it's just going to be for the whole year. It's this price and then four more years with your uh, built in like escalation and incremental increases. And like, that's it. Like that, that's all you can do with this. So you can feel free to ask questions to David here. Otherwise, that's what you're going to have to do for that one. Uh, we got a uh, Mal Q. Hi, can you do any on painting with data jobs? I'm interested in doing that. I do residential and commercial painting. Hey, what's going on? Um, yeah, so the bids I choose, they're just kind of pretty random and I choose them before um, the episode starts. So I, I don't like do anything like inter, inter episode. Um, and I usually don't take requests just because it's, like I said, it's usually like I choose what we, what we go after. I do try to like switch it up um, and things. But if you have any like specific questions, um, you know, feel free to bring those and I can try to answer those, but everything we teach, like it, it pretty much pertains to all service-based contracts. And that's why we, we spread it around. Um, I do have a, a coaching program where we're on zoom and they literally, you know, send me bids and we, we look at those together. So like, if you're looking for that type of service, maybe like the coaching program would be, would be a good fit, but just for like the hour we have together, we try to like cram a lot in. So not really able to do like a lot of requests here on, on the channel, but the coaching program, like we'll go for two or three hours and we look at everything. So, um, you know, feel free to consider that at my website. There's more uh, details. Uh, Devonda, another quick lodging question. I know that I saw one bid where they said the invoice in arrears. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, that's how it always is. So, uh, you pay, then they reimburse you. And that's all government contracts. The government never like gives you money up front. Cause then you could just like peace out. Um, also they asked for site visits. So should I bid for those in my area so I can be there in other cities? Uh, yeah, that that's fine. It's up to you. You can always have a person go, you can have a company representative go. You don't always have to be the one to like attend, which is how we do things like across the country in the federal space versus sticking like, or, or being stuck rather, uh, to local city state contracts. Um, so yeah, you, you just have somebody go and represent your company. They do the sign in list, they pay attention, they bring questions that maybe you have, and then they gather information and they come back and they like give you the information. That person could be a subcontractor or just somebody that you know local who's going to go and represent your company. Uh, really not too big of a deal. That's like that's how we do it because um, it's got to make sense, but it's also got to be like, pragmatic and we can't be at a million places all at once. So good question for sure. All right, guys, and hey, if you're liking this, feel free to smash that like button while you're here. If you're live watching, like this video helps the algorithm. You know how it goes. And um, if you're just kind of joining us for the first time, welcome. Um, good morning, good afternoon for some. And uh, if you're not subscribed yet, consider subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss future episodes like this so that you can plan to bring more questions in the future and catch me on our next lives um, and get some more value for your business here in the space. Cool, cool. So next one we have pre yellow ribbon event. So this is going to be kind of related to lodging. This is going to be USPFO National Guard. Done a number of these myself, small business set aside. They have a NAICS code for 721-110 for hotels. This is going to be in Oklahoma City. 
looks like there's two amendments issued on this. Our documents are amendment one, amendment two. We have a solicitation doc, and then we have a statement of work. I'm gonna see what I can quickly gather from the listing description here. They need it to be a three diamond or higher, higher triple A rated hotel. So that's gonna be one of your factors. It's gonna be for the um, yellow ribbon reintegration program. Yellow ribbon, if you guys don't know what it is, it's usually pre and post deployment supports soldiers and their families when they're leaving and when they're coming home. Yeah, they are talking about, you know, the AV stuff I mentioned earlier, audio, video equipment. And they're also talking about food too, which is very common with these type of events. They are referencing a two-day event here. So let's go ahead and see what the actual docs have to tell us to help fill in these gaps. And guys, this is just like popping into my head, but it's been bugging me like for the last couple of weeks. Um, we're getting a lot of like, like the pulse I'm getting in my ear to the ground doing these and then just like paying attention to all the questions we're getting. I'm sensing there's a lot of questions into like how to actually like do these contracts, how to actually fulfill them, perform them, perform them. Um, if that's you, let me know in the chat, be like, yes, like wanting more information on how to fulfill the contracts. Uh, most of these questions are coming from people who don't self-perform or people who don't already have an established commercial based business. Instead, it's people that are working full-time jobs um, or they're doing something else and they're wanting to expand into this, but they're like, well, like, how do I do it? How do I do it in a compliant way? How do I be legal? Legal middle middlemanning is also something that's been brought up uh, a lot too. So just let me know in the chat if that's something that um, you're like, yeah, Derek, that's just say yes. Like, that's fine. Just say yes. <laughs> I'll know what it means. If that's resonating with you because i know we look a lot at bids but then i wonder if there's like the dot 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 like okay cool sounds good starting to make sense how do i how do i do it okay um so let me know anyways we have our solicitation document again this is for yellow ribbon or pre-yellow ribbon they're telling us this is lowest price technically acceptable so lowest price bid will win and that makes sense because this is going to be hotels it's going to be a commodity item. And the way that they're enforcing quality control on this is that they've already said uh, this has to be a triple A rated hotel and three star. So they're not worried about going lowest price on this because they know it has to be triple A and three star at least. All right. Evaluation. Yeah. LPTA. Submission of proposals. Okay. The government anticipates making award without discussion. Must ensure all components of their pricing and technical proposal are included, yada, yada. They're saying pricing sheet. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. This says pricing sheet and this is adult menu and children menu. And this is in the submission of proposal. So that's interesting. Are they wanting to see like the menu to make sure it's going to be up to snuff and then the pricing for it all? Because that's kind of how this is popping out to me. Just haven't really seen it like that, but. They're saying all questions are due uh, September 22nd, which was like two weeks ago. Let me just double check our due date on this. October 13th, this is due. So this is due in a week. Just making sure we're actually live on this. Okay. Okay, reps and certs. Statement of work, it looks like, okay, more reps and certs. Yeah, just like all like reps and certs. Okay, what was the other document? Because there actually was not a whole lot there. Going to bounce over to the statement of work. So this is where they're going to talk specifically about the meals, the rooms. Uh, 
I know I'm going through it super fast. I'm just looking for specific things right now. Um, this is going to start kick off December 3rd. Okay. So that you do have some time. You got a couple months to be ready for this. Wi-Fi registration area, breakout rooms, exhibit area for refreshment tables, child care rooms, youth rooms, catering is required for lunch and an afternoon snack. This is, I guess, why they're wanting to see like the, the, the menus. Didn't see anything about dinner. Could have missed it. Site visit and pre-staging is two hours uh, the evening before the event. That's kind of kind of it. So um got an updated statement of work. We have a QA. I'm gonna bounce over to the QA because I'm not really seeing a whole lot of upfront info. And looks like we only have two questions. So maybe only one bidder is interested in this, guys, which is why why we can win um by just playing in the total small business space, because uh, a lot of these contracts do not receive more than you know a handful, half dozen, or maybe just one or two bids. Um, question, due to the number of attendees, 800, there are very limited amounts of venues. Is it possible that we propose alternative dates? Nope. There is a chance that it could be 700, though. But it has to be during the dates of December. And then next, can we extend the mileage to find a facility? So can you go further out? No, the unit wants it to be the Oklahoma City metro area, including Edmond, Moore, Norman, Mustang, and Yukon. So no changes. So uh, another example of no price and cleanse, not really any, I'm going to try to cheat again. I'm going to use my control F just in case I missed it. Instruction, if I could spell. Instruction to bidders, instruction offers. This is what we look for. And we do not have that. Then we also check for evaluation, which we read this on page one, but is there anything else? There's not. So like literally all the info we have is this first page of info that we already uh, read through, which is basically saying this is the lowest price. And then the reason why this is really more of like a, a just a true quote, a true request for quote RFQ is because submission of proposals here, like this is it. It's just the menus and it's just this pricing sheet, which I didn't see administrative data and, and pricing data. Um, my last search on this one, I really kind of like need to find that. Just going through the different documents here. It's not in the same in a work. Um, so I would ask contracting, like I'd have to submit RFI, like where is said pricing sheet, administration data and pricing data that you've referenced? Okay. Like, where is it? I feel like I'm missing something. I can, I can certainly make something up for you, but I don't want to misquote it. So I, at the very minimum, I, I, I need that because they just, it's not here. They just didn't give it to us. So it's a good example, guys. That's why we go through these raw. It's a good example of needing to be quick on your feet, um, needing to dig in your heels. If something doesn't make sense, it may not make sense. You need to reach out to contracting or you need to decide to no bid on it. If it's like really off, be like, okay, I'm not even going to mess with this. There's so many other better things to go after. Uh, those are the type of decisions that you make um, and what we try to like practice here on the, on the channel. All right, so we'll go ahead and call that one. Um, chat, 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 war dog. What's going on, my man? Finally got my cage code. Yes, let's go. Ready to hit the pavement and run. Very excited. Love it. Thanks for the update, man. Um, so happy to hear that. Let me know war dog. Let me know, uh, for everybody else here who is currently going through it or has been, you know, cause I know we had prior conversations on this. How long, like kind of start to finish did it take for you to get your cage code? And then did you have any of the issues with like the physical address or the IRS TIN mismatch? Um, that would be super helpful for everybody like who's kind of joining in. I know we have others that are experiencing that or going to experience it. All right, cool. So in regards to my question, um, how to fill the contracts, uh, Carl Brown. Yes, that's exactly me. 
Nice. The dude rock. Do you have to own a business to do government contracts? Yes, you do. Um, real life with Ronnie. Uh, the only, the only, here's the thing, uh, the dude rock. If you're going to try to like staff yourself, like this is the one exception to this. Um, then you can register in Sam as a sole proprietor instead of uh, like an LLC or an S corp or a C corp. But that's only if you're going to like staff for yourself and then your, your TIN, your tax ID number, instead of it being like an EIN an employer ID number, it becomes your SSN, your social security number. Um, that's like the only other way around it. So I'm, most people don't do that. I don't know if that's what you're, you're inferring, but I just want to be accurate. Real life with Ronnie. Yes. How do you fulfill the contract? Awesome. Thanks for giving me the feedback guys. I appreciate knowing that's what you need help with. I will tell you that um, I have created one resource. It's totally free because I'm just trying to help you guys. Um, it does a pretty good job at talking about middlemanning, um, legal middlemanning uh, and working with subcontractors. If you're interested in that, um, I highly recommend checking that out. I will even grab the link for it and paste it. For any of you guys that are, are saying, yes, that's me. Um, this will definitely help you, but I'm thinking about creating something like even more, but like for now it, it will be, uh, it will be super helpful. If you, if it's not something you've gone through, it'll be super helpful. I'm just going to post this, how to fulfill on contract and bid. Okay. So that's in the chat. Just check that out. Um, or just go to my website and then click on the free training uh, on the menu option. Okay, okay, okay. So back to War Dog. Um, three weeks total. Not bad, actually. For I don't know why I thought it was so much longer. Just respond accordingly and you will be good. And I think that's the key. I know that there are some who are suffering unduly because they're not like checking their, their emails. Some maybe things are going to spam. Uh, but sometimes it's just taking longer for people I know. Three weeks is on the lighter side of what I'm hearing, but I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Maybe, maybe it's starting to improve. Devonda physical address took a long time to get the cage code. So when I put my address, I received the cage code within five days. Nice. Thank you for that feedback as well. Thank you. That's super helpful. Um, real life with Ronnie. It took me two months to become active. Thank you guys. This is so, this is so awesome. Um, all of you have been, sounds like recently, or relatively recently kind of through this hurdle. So um, thanks for like extending a hand to help everybody who's going down the path that you just kind of blazed through. Um, my name and Sam didn't match my business name with the state I'm in. Got it. Got it. Word says, I think the only hard part and somewhat confusing part is the actual Sam registration itself, but that's why there is YouTube for sure. I learned everything off there. YouTube University, gotta love it. Gotta love it. Awesome. Yeah, check out that uh, the, the masterclass thing I linked up for anybody who was saying that earlier. All right. I guess I forgot that I already had a ground maintenance. So we do have a snow and ice removal. So we'll just do that one anyways on top of it. This is for the Army. This is due the 14th in a week. Small business set aside. Other service to uh, buildings and dwellings. NAICS code. Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. In terms of documents, we have solicitation. Looks like an amendment. And looks like a pricing worksheet. So that's good. Go ahead and Guys, I swear one of these days I'm gonna have to clear out all my downloads because like every time I open something, it obviously goes in my download file and I'm opening up so many of these bids every single week and it just all sits there. I don't ever clean it out. Anyways, um, okay, that's a 1449 form. Let's see here. Again, this is for snow removal. Statement of work. A lot of definitions. Okay, so they're getting into sidewalks and, and walkways, roads, lots. 
completion time within eight hours of the start time. And then it may be waived for events of six or more inches. Okay, these are things that you share with your subs. What do we have here? So they are giving you specific tasks for the different areas, okay? So that's really, really important. Okay, and we did find the price and cleanse. So I think this is the first price and cleanse that we found all day. So here's the cleanse, 001, 002, 003, 004. 005 and then 1001. So we're into option year one. That's what that means. Option year two. We'll see how far it's going to go. Option year two. So three years in total. And then we'll just refresh ourselves on what these cleans are. So it's the snow and ice removal. Okay. Estimated quantity 300. That's, that's a lot. 300 for one year. It's Pennsylvania. No, it snows there a lot, but not 300 times. This 300 may not signify dispatched phone calls. It could signify something else. Okay, so more snow and ice removal so for the second clean. For clean number three, more snow and ice removal. But they're doing it for these different locations that we saw in that PWS. Because they're not making any other distinction besides the change in quantity. Is now 100, then 5,000. What? Maybe it's like, I don't know, they're saying a lot. I don't know. It can't be like square footage. Lots just like an area. So let's see if we can look at this again. Was it a different document? I don't think so. Yep, so there's the cleanse. Got it. Must be uh, like thinking of a previous bit. I, I swear that we just saw the statement at work. I mean, I'm pretty sure that we did. Yeah, yeah, it is. It was at the top. Okay. I'm not losing it. I'm not losing it yet. Not totally. When you look at this many bids, you kind of go cross-eyed after a while. So I was just looking for that chart that we saw. This chart right here. Okay. Okay. I'm not crazy. Looking to see if there's an indication here that matches up with these different price inclines. That's what I'm trying to do. Because they're not really, they're saying like LH. Um, and then they're talking about quantities of like 5,000 and 300 and 100. And what does that mean? Because they're saying per lot. Like I get like parking lot or something like that. I get it. But there's so many lots here. That's not really covering the basis. So it didn't really answer my questions. I would need a bit more clarification on that. Site visit would definitely help quite a bit. And these type of questions, they're just, you know, they're bound to happen. We have an amendment. Um, see what this pricing thing looks like. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it's so it is ours. It actually is ours. But where's the five thousand thing? Because they are saying here unit hours versus before it said unit lots, and that's why it didn't make sense. So they're saying three hundred hours makes way more way more sense. I think they just left that out. You see guys, like when you looking at something and you're like, this doesn't make sense. And you're just like stuck on it. Cause you're like, it, no, no way you look at it. It doesn't make sense. It may just not make sense. And then you find out later, oh, like they, they left something out. No wonder it didn't make sense. Cause here the unit should not be lot. It should be hours. It should be hours. Cause that's what they, that's what they're saying. hundred hours. Um, so then my only other last question is, where they said 5,000. Okay. Is it, was it actually not 5,000 or was it 500? 
Sorry about all the scrolling. No, see, it's 5,000. They put 5,000. So they're saying estimated 5,000. Oh my gosh. They're saying lot equals dollars here. What are they doing? They're saying a lot equals $5,000. That actually blows the lid off this thing. <sighs> this is hilarious. They just said that it was ours in the other document. They said it was the quantity was ours. Okay, so this thing, there's a sloppy job. They're they're mismatching. They got three different units being put on this. Um, and it doesn't make any sense that this would be $5,000. Because what are you going to put for the unit price? $5,000? I mean, that makes no sense. Like, they can't tell you what the cost is. Yeah, this is crazy. This is the craziest one that I've seen uh, in a while. Little Brownie D saying, what does that mean? Lot equals dollars. That, that's what I'm saying. Because up here it's saying lot equals hours. Okay. All right. I think I got it. I think I think I figured it out. And to be honest, it's probably half my fault because just because I go through these so fast. Here they're saying, you know, so pressing Clinton one, they're saying a lot equals hours. All right. They don't normally ever put a definition like this in here. Like why say lot equals hours? Just put hours. Nobody uses lot. It's either job or it's hours. Okay. Or it's like MO for month. Um, it's usually not lot for, for this type of service contract. So that's the first thing that they could improve on if I'm going to give some positive criticisms. But then what they did here is, and, and, all the more reason that they shouldn't do that is now they're taking lot and making it mean something else. And that's why it's entirely confusing. Now they're saying down here, lot equals dollars. So you can't take the same unit of measure and straight up change the definition from hours to dollars. But what they're trying to say here is for this Clint five, that this is a miscellaneous kind of catch all bucket. And we just want to put an extra five grand in here in case we need to like, you know, use something else. So you would just put 5,000 here because this is like a bucket. It's like when they give you travel, like you don't quote the travel when they say like travel is for like 10 travels per year and it's going to be like 20 grand or whatever it is, 10 grand um, or like whatever it is for however many people they give you that, that bucket of money and they just say, just put it here. Okay. There's no markup. There's no nothing. It's just money that we're fronting because we know it's going to be required to do this. It's kind of like that where they're saying, okay, here's a bucket of money, just five grand. Looks like they're going to be doing it for each and every year as well. And it's basically there for them to dig into in case they need to like put more money on for any of these other CLINs because it's really difficult for contracting after the contract's awarded to add money to a contract. It's really pretty difficult for them. So this way they kind of build in funds uh, to, to be used almost like a safety net. So, okay, well... I would say that the biggest cause of that is number one, I read quickly um, and miss things uh, because I read so quickly, but we're live. Um, but then number two, I would say half, you know, half of it's not my fault because they're doing this lot hours and lot dollar things. Um, they shouldn't be changing definitions like that. Well, that's, so that's what it means. All right. Uh, uh, Devon Singh, to start doing uh, contracts, do I need to have a small business or can I do it by myself? It depends. This is a similar question to that we had earlier. If you're just wanting to like staff yourself, put yourself on a contract um, or just like do work as a one man team and like say you find a local like this, a local snow plowing contract and you've got a truck and it's a small little lot. <laughs> That's all a small little lot, right? Um, and you just want to do it all yourself. Like you could do that through a sole proprietorship but a sole proprietorship is still a form of a business. There's just no protection. If you get sued, they're going to come after all your personal assets and it costs almost nothing in terms of time and money to set up an LLC where they can't come after any of your personal assets. So I just really don't know why at all you wouldn't um, incorporate um, 
But in order to do this, you need to have a cage code. That's the answer. In order to have a cage code, you have to register a business, right? So in order to register a business, you have to have some sort of business, right? Incorporated within your state, whether it's an LLC or if you're going to do a sole proprietorship, that's fine. But just keep in mind, can't give you legal or tax advice, but just uh, be careful. Uh, Desmond O'Donnell for the Yellow Ribbon event. Yes. Uh, do you pay the hotel fully before the government pays you or you negotiate with the hotels? Um, you, it's possible to come up with like terms for the hotel. It's going to be depend on like what hotel you're working with. The hotel could give you some sort of net 30 terms. Um, but typically you just got to pay the hotel typically. Little Brownie says these are so complicated. Sometimes it's hard to read hundred percent. Um, Repetition is the mother of skill. And that's why we focus a lot on this repetitive reading stuff. Yep. And um, for the Yellow Ribbon event, do you pay the hotels? Yeah, I think that's the same question, Desmond. So yeah, you typically pay the hotels up front unless they will give you some sort of payment terms. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool, guys. Well, again, um, if you, if you like this video, smash the like button, subscribe if you're not subscribed so that you don't miss future live sessions here. Um, there's so much more to learning about bidding and winning here on SAM than what we do here on the channel. Um, if you're someone who's trying to bid on SAM.gov like now, if you got your cage code, you're ready. Um, if you are somebody who's coachable and you're wanting a step-by-step -step proven process and you want to work with me as your safety net, we are still, um, we're super selective, but we still are allowing um, coaching clients into our program. You can learn more about that at govkinmethod.com. And that is it for today, guys. So awesome session. Thanks for hanging out. Um, it's Friday, so have a great, awesome weekend. And we will see you all for some more live training next week. So take care, everybody. We'll see you all very soon.